This is Algebra 1100, page 23. It's called Factoring the Difference of Two Squares. Does it look to you like I'm still wearing the same clothes I was wearing for the other videos? <laughs> I actually went home thinking I was going to have supper and spend the evening at home, and I got home and my wife had a talkative friend over. And so supper is probably not going to be for an hour. And since I live close to school, I said, you know what? I'm just going to walk back over to school and uh, make a few more videos and then go home for supper. So here's a quick lesson on the difference of perfect squares. Now remember in an earlier lesson, we multiplied two binomials together and the middle term completely canceled out. And we ended up with two binomials. We ended up with just the difference of perfect squares. So these are actually kind of easy to solve once we recognize that that's what it is. So this is the difference. So we're in subtraction is difference. And then we're looking to make sure that we can find the square root of both the first and the last term. Now be careful because on the bottom of page um, 23, and then there's four more problems on page 24, they throw a few curveballs in there. They might throw one in that's plus. Okay, or they might throw one in where you actually can't do the square root, like if it's something to the third power, you can't actually do the square root of that. So <clears throat> don't be alarmed if you come across some and say, I can't figure this out. It might have been some of those they threw in there that you can't factor. So let's, um, let's walk through the steps here. We basically want to end up with two parentheses. All right, what is the square root of 4x squared? What times itself equals 4x squared. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and obviously x times x is x squared. So I'm going to put 2x in the front here, 2x in the front of the second parentheses. This one's easy. The square root of y squared is just y. And then the last step, okay, real easy. We just do plus and minus. I could do minus and plus. It wouldn't matter which order. But remember, if I do the FOIL method now <clears throat> to check my work, 2x times 2x is indeed 4x squared. For the middle term, I would get 2xy and negative 2xy. Remember the outer inner. And then for the last term, I get y plus times negative y is negative y squared. And that's what I want. See how easy that is? Okay, let's take a problem like this one. This looks complicated. 64x squared minus 81z squared. So let's set up the two parentheses. What's the square root of 64? 8x. We'll put 8x in the front of both of these. Square root of 81. You know that because 8 plus 1 is 9, so you know it's divisible by 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So I'll do 9z, 9z. And then, real simple, we're done by just doing plus, minus. Okay? So once you recognize the pattern, these become very easy to factor. The first two terms are the same, the last two terms are the same, and it's just a plus and a minus. You can check it by doing the FOIL method. This looks more complicated than it really is. Let's figure it out here. What number is the square root of 25? 5, right? So we'll do 5a front and back. Now, what fraction times itself equals 1 ninth? I'm going to let you finish this one. So you put that fraction here and here, what fraction times itself, and then put the plus and the minus in, and then you're done. This one. Did you know, I mean, think about this. What number times itself equals 1? See, this isn't as hard as it looks. So set up the two parentheses, square root in the front and back of this one. You know the square root of 1. Put that in the front and back, and then it's just that pattern, plus, minus, boom. Check your work just to make sure you got it right. And I think you'll find once you get the hang of it and the light bulb comes on for you that this page isn't too bad. All right, I'll meet you again on the next lesson in a couple of minutes.